Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another episode uh, as far as in the Cades Cadence series. Uh, this is uh, Palo Pat. And uh, today we got something a little bit different and, you know, really special um, challenge that I want us to go over. So this is called the EKS Cluster Games. And I believe it's set up by uh, Wiz, uh, which is a like monitoring and uh, ex vulnerability company. Um, and they gave us this great opportunity to, um, you know, test some clusters and, you know, doing some like probing um, and yeah, some cybersecurity ish stuff. So very exciting um, and different challenge, but also so lets you understand the, the, the baseline of Kubernetes um, and, you know, how authentication and all that stuff works so you can understand how to protect it. Um, so that's going to be very, very valuable. Um you know, for a developer or, you know, someone who's like a platform engineer. So this is going to be um, a really cool challenge. So we're going to go ahead and start challenge one and uh, try to do like two, two challenge one to two or something like that, one and two, or, you know, however we get, how far we get, but uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start to uh, get right at it. So if you want to try it out, it's just go to eksclustergames.com and uh, the first challenge will automatically come up for you. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Let me just go ahead and did i go to the right one okay it's here all right so uh as we see here uh, we're hacked into a low privilege a uh, low pri low privilege aws eks pod so we're going to use the web terminal below to find flags across the environment and each challenge is going to run into a different kubernetes namespace with uh you know different uh, permissions so all of the resources are crucial challenges are based on real eks misconfigurations and security issues and uh, the, you know, Wiz actually discovered that um, they found these actual problems in production clusters um, when they were um, actually doing tests on, on real life accounts. So this is not something that they just, you know, are trying or found out. Um, but yeah, uh, cool. So yeah, so this is a, a really, really good challenge that actual companies were misconfiguring. <laughs> clusters. So let's go ahead and begin. So let's go and see what we got here. So we, as we see, there's a cluster um, we have as far as like a terminal here. So we can like LS and see what's there. Um, QCTL, you know, so we have everything there, right? So it says here, jumpstart our quest by listing all secrets in the cluster. And can we spot the flag among them? And uh, it's called secret seeker. Okay. All right, so the challenge is worth 10 points. And the only thing that we have here to start off is it says view permission. So let's see actually what that gives us here and uh, see how we can probe around and, and pick at what permissions we may have access to. So, okay, so it says something about secrets and there's the get and list option. So uh, yeah, not really much information on that, but uh, let's see. So apparently it wants us to look at some secrets. So let me go ahead and see if I can actually make this bigger as well um, for everybody here. So I'm just going to pull this up since we don't need that anymore. All right. So let's go ahead and do uh, cube CTL. Um, let's try to get pods first just to see if it gives us permissions. All right. And we actually don't have those permissions. So we can't even get pods. So this is very limited to our permissions. So they're pretty scoped. Um, so let's do cube CTL, um, get secrets. Okay. All right. So we can get secrets. Okay. So that's something that we have access to. And uh, let's go ahead and do a cube CTL, like describe. Let's see if we can describe this. Let's describe a secret log rotate. Um, okay, we can, but it's not giving us any other details about, um, the challenge or whatever. So what I would like to do is, um, when you, with Kubernetes, you can, for example, do, uh, to get more information, we can do kubectl get secret. Oh, it's not, um, I'm so used to auto correct, auto, um, complete. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's do get secrets here, right? And then we can do, we do that. It's not going to give us anything, right? But if I do minus O YAML, it's actually going to spit out like everything. So although I don't have like the, I have the describe option, but to really get the full 
details um, and it's not like obfuscated or just not showing everything, we can do the output YAML as far as cube detail gets secret. And the same thing with like pause, for example, too. So let's go ahead. Okay, so we got a flag. So we have a flag already, which is good. So we're, we're in good shape. And this is a flag here, but this is going to most likely be uh, base 64 encoded. But let's go ahead and just see if this is a flag that we can just enter like this. Just enter wrong flag. Okay, so it doesn't like that, right? So what we need to do is um, we need to um, decode this from base 64, right? And to do that, very simple. But before we even do that, I want to go ahead and just... Make it a little bit more interesting. You know, I got to spice it up, right? So I'm going to do minus output JSON. And then I'm going to go ahead and pipe this to uh, JQ, right? So JQ minus C and then paths, I believe. All right. And I want to go ahead and actually get that flag here, right? So what I can do is I can go ahead and do output JSON path equals and then the curly brackets. And I'm going to put dot meta data. Find spell dot metadata. It's going to put dot data and see what if it gives me anything. Oh, wait, did I do something wrong? Dot metadata. Um, minus output JSON path. Is it like it's not like that, right? Hang on. Oops. Here. So minus output JSON path is equal to dot metadata uh, dot flag. I don't even like this output. Did I do something wrong? Output JSON path. Oh no, I got it. So capital. I don't know why it's not giving me anything. I think this other one was going to skip it. Sometimes you can go like this too. Okay, it's preferring this way, I guess. So dot metadata dot data. Doesn't like that. Hey, PJ, it looks like... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not even doing it right. I see what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> dot data, duh. <laughs> dot, so it's because it's going, it's going to be so dot data, right? So it's API version data. I'm so used to um the other things here. So it's so then we get the flag. So now I can just do dot flag. And then I got that right. Okay, so now what I can do here is do base... Um. 64, right? So if I do base 64, I should be able to. That's all right. I'm being too fancy. Right. So let's copy this. And then we can do base 64 minus D. All right, cool. And look what we got. We have Wiz EKS challenge OMG. So this is actually what the decoded um, flag is. So if I do this now, I think I should be good. All right, perfect. So that's there. So what I was trying to do is just uh, use um, kubectl but if i do it probably will work if i do it like this um oh it didn't have the thing b64 minus e um i've been trying to use like bash and like things lately so i've been trying to make simple things difficult <laughs> so this works okay this works here so base 64 minus d um and then this is just output redirection i can I, we can also do like echo this 
and then I can let me see here. So I can like do this, echo this, and then I can pipe this into uh a sixty four minus D as well, and it gives us the same thing. So like three ways to do it, right? But we got challenge one done. So that's that's the first challenge, and I just the different ways that we can do it. And then now we can go ahead and uh, try the second challenge. So that was a simple one. Did anyone have any questions before we move on to the next challenge? Was that straightforward or any questions on that? Or why did it this way or any base 64 issues or anything? All right, cool. Guess not. So we're going to move forward. All right, cool. So next question here is, um, it says the registry hunt. So it says the thing we learned during our research is always check the container registry. So for our convenience, the crane utility is already pre-installed on the machine. And okay, so it's saying something related to registries. So let's see what permissions we have now. So now we have secrets, we can get secrets and we have pods where we can list and get pods. So um, it's saying something about a registry. So let's, let's take a look. So let's do okay, get. Oh, let me see what I got. Oh. UCTL equals, well, K equals UCTL. Well, new alias. Okay. All right. So, hey, uh, let's do get all. It's probably not going to give us anything. Okay, so even you can get all, it shows you the only things that you can see. So we can see that there's a database. I mean, there's a, a pod named database pod. So let's go ahead and try something. Let's do K get pods database. It doesn't even let you do that. Let me uh, copy it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to get the pod. And then also let's see if there's any secrets which probably is not, you know, you can't get any secrets. Okay, that's fine. So let's do K get pods and then the name of the pod and we're gonna do that same thing output YAML, but I'm just gonna do, yeah, let's do output YAML. See what we get. All right, so let's go ahead and just analyze this pod and see if there's anything that's like sticking out for us. So API version, kind, metadata, some annotations, Creation timestamp and name of the pod and namespace that the pod is in. Okay, then we got container image name, EKS cluster games. All right, image pull policy. All right, resources, termination, volume mounts, DNS, enable service links, image pull secrets. Hmm. So this looks kind of interesting, right? Um, we can scroll down and see if there's anything else that looks, you know, interesting. Um Tolerations look fine. Status. Okay. So only thing that really, really sticks out to me is either the name of the image as well as the, um, this says registry. We are working on something that says registry hunt. So we're looking for something with the registry, which this is sticking out in my opinion. So let's see here. So this looks, this is a secret. So let's do a K get secret. I didn't want to paste that. So we are able to see that. Okay. So let's do the same thing that we did before. So we're going to do output uh, YAML. And it looks like we have something here. So we have a Docker configuration. Um, Docker.config.json. All right. Well, dot, dot Docker config JSON. Okay, cool. So what should we do now that we have this? So we have some whole bunch of gibberish here, which probably is what? The game started right now. Mommy, you're not watching the game. It's also so cool. Bro, the, what do you mean? Can you mute, please? Thank you. Yeah. Um. All right, cool. So now that I want someone to tell me what we should do now. We we got this information here. Um. What I just did it earlier, you know, in the call. What should I do here? What What do what tool can we use to decode this anybody 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 
All Let's right. Let's try using base 64 to decode it. Base 64. All right. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go about it, too. So, yeah. So let's go ahead. I'm not going to do the, the, the interesting way I did earlier, but um, let's just do a base 64. And then minus D, because you have to do the minus D flag, which is going to be stand for decode. So let's do that here. And then we can do, actually, let me do an echo. Echo this, and then space pipes. So we're going to pipe it. So we're going to pipe this data into base 64 minus D. And then look what it gives us. OK, so we have some index docker.io. OK, that looks like a, OK, that looks good. Uh, and then it says the off is this thing here. So it looks like we might need to do another um, base 64 on this. So let's go and do the same thing. So we're going to do echo this and grab base 64 minus D. Okay, now we got something. Oh, it says Docker Pat. This is this is just an ironic thing. I, I have no association with this, but um, interestingly enough, okay. All right, good. So we got something that says EKS Cluster Games and Docker Pat. So this might be something like a, what do you guys think this could be? Like an image name or maybe like a username and password, maybe? Might be username and password or a Docker name and password. Because remember, when we looked up here, the name of that image was EKS Cluster Games. And then it says base EXT image. So this is the name of the repo, like the registry, like the repo. So like, you know, if you own your registry, like my Docker account, for example. Um, uh, Docker Hub, sorry. It's going to be like, if I sign in. Yeah, everyone has their own specific registry that they can publish. Right. To, um, and then pull anything from there. Exactly. I, I don't know if it's going to let me sign it because I'm using like an incognito page and I don't feel like I'll be doing all of that. If it doesn't let me get in, it's fine. Okay, I'm in. All right, cool. So as you see here, like this is my Docker account. So my username and then like my actual image or my repo for that Docker image, right? So that's what that's doing here. That's what that's showing. So it says something now. So now we, it looks like we have some like credentials, right? So now um, it says the crane utility is already pre-installed. I have not used crane, but let's, let's take a look and see what it could be. So it looks like it may be something like a crane something, okay. All right, so crane, and let's take a look and see what the available commands are. So it says crane, append, auth, blob, catalog, completion, config, copy, delete, digest. Okay, flatten, index. All right, so anything that sticks out that we probably should try to experiment with off rip over here? It's kind of looking right at me. And I, I just. The, uh off yeah i think so too login or access credentials right so let's just try and see if we can get in there so let's do crank crane off and remember if you don't know how to do something you just enter it and it just tells you like you or always use the dash dash help to give you help on things that you may not be familiar with so now we have these couple of things right so let's try to log in so crane off login and let's see what it's asking for so it gave me an error. It says accepts one R and zero receive. So let's do dash dash help. All right. And it should help us out. Okay. So it gave us an example. So it says create crane auth login. It looks like it's the, the registry name, the username, and then the password. So if we scroll back up here, right, we got a few things. So we got, it said auths. So index.docker.io. So I'm assuming that maybe we can log in with docker.io and then use this username and password that it gave us. So I'm going to try that first. So let's try this. Auth login, docker.io. And then I'm going to have to do this password again. So I'm going to do um, a control A and then put a, um, uh, what's the name in front of that? Um, my brain is freezing right now. I just got a message. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and run that command again because I got to get the um that password and username. 
again. Okay, so it looks like the username is gonna be EKS cluster game. So what I can do is oh man, it keeps going away. I'm gonna copy this. And it says I need to do like a minus U for user and then minus P for password. So minus P. So I'm going to save that and then go back up and do it again and then copy this. Let me move this out the way. All right. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. So now we should have everything we need. So I want to do minus P. Oops. And then now A, and I'm just going to backspace from that. So train auth login docker.io. The username is EKS cluster games, and the password is docker at, you know, blase blase. Let's see, we are able to get in. Oh, okay. All right. So we're able to log in. That looks good. So I, I think we're, I think we're heading somewhere. So let me just copy this and see what's actually in here. So I'm going to do a control C. Control L just to clear clear it up, and um, let's go ahead and cat this. Is there anything significant in there? No, it's not. Just giving us the same thing that we had before, just basic coded. So let's ls this. So we got that. So now what can we do? Um, let's do crane again and see what what's available. So crane. List the repos in the registry. Um, let's see, no crane catalog or something. Let's see. Um, nope. Um, the registry. So I don't know. Is this registry gonna be? The Docker or the EKS one? Let's see. Pull this back up here. It was EKS cluster games. Um, so I think it's Docker that I was looking for. Um, must be valid. So I guess not. Whatever. So don't think we get anywhere with that. So what I think we should do is maybe let's try to explore the image itself, right? We we did get details about an image um when we did when we ran the Git pods, right? So let's see if that, that tells us anything. Next image RPM. So I don't think Docker's installed on anything right now. So what I'm gonna do is do crane and you can pull remote images and store their contents locally. So can we do a crane pull? This name of this image. Um, let's do help. So crane pull image. Tarball. Does that do? Oh crap! Yeah, that doesn't look useful at all, right? So I'm gonna clear that up. So crane pull tarball. Um, maybe some more help and see what it does. So we can pull image flag allows us to cache format stream. Okay, I want to see if there's any other options. So we got crane pull. So I was able to pull the image. So 
within this R3 vlog catalog completion config. So we can get the config of an image. So let's try to config. So train config. Oh. And then name of the image. Okay. So let's do the name of the image. Train config. Okay, we got something here. All right, so let's see what it says. So um, AMD, so it's AMD 64 architecture. Um, arguments escaped, history created, add file, okay. Empty layer true, created, run, run shell minus C echo. Wiz, EKS challenge, nothing can be said, certain except death taxes and the existence of misconfigured image pull secret so i don't know that that looks like that's a flag to me like that looks like a flag i'm going to copy that and see if that's something that we can use um is that it <laughs> yes it is so we are able to go ahead and we actually were able to pull it from the image itself, the details from there. And it, I guess it's like, cause it's echoing into this flag here, into this flag that TXT, that's what it's kind of, that's what it looks like it's doing um, from that, from that content there. And it's telling us the OS and all that good stuff. So that's step two. Um, any questions on that? That one was kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie. That one, that one was not easy to, to probe through. But as you see, you get a little piece of information then as a, uh, you know, as a bad actor, you can slowly, um, you know, find information that leads you to something else that then opens up some doors for something else. So it's always an interesting experience to, um, you know, see how these things are supposed to work in your favor and help you, but sometimes they can be used uh, maliciously as well. So it's all on how you use the tool, right? So, um, yeah, so that's hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Was that was that interesting? Did you guys uh learn something or or probably more confused than than the start? Uh how you guys feel so far? We're good, we're good to move on. That's good. That's good. There's a lot of steps to follow through though. Yeah, that one is a that one was like a hard uh that's a hard follow, I'm not gonna lie. So and I honestly was going through it like, okay, let's like go through each piece one thing doesn't work doesn't mean it just stops us right i did the tarball thing and that didn't really get us anywhere but i just looked through the options that we had and you know you can just kind of like you know poke through so that's good so now we successfully used this technique in both of our engagements with alibaba cloud and ibm cloud obtain internal container images and to prove um, unauthorized access to cross-tenant data um so let's do it that's what they're saying that they did so the next step is uh, image inquisition. So a pod's image holds more than just code. Dive deep into its ECR repository, inspect the image layers, and uncover the hidden secret. Okay, so remember, you are running inside a um, compromised EKS pod. So for our convenience, the crane utility is already pre-installed. So we got that crane utility thing again. Um, okay. Uh, so this one is probably going to be the last challenge we do, um, but we can try to do uh, four, five, and six, uh, well, four and five on your own, and uh, you can tell me how it was last week, uh, next week. So I'll challenge you guys to do that. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see what they want us to do here, because this one looks like it's going to be convoluted and difficult. So let's see what permissions we got. Um, so we got pods, git. And listing get okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. So let's do k get pods. That's the only thing that we can do. Oh, oh wait. Do CTL get pods. All right, so let me do alias k equals CTL. All right, so k get pods. Uh, minus, oh, well, do just need to copy this first. And then minus output YAML. So let's see what this pod gives us. Anything special here. 
Let's start from the top. So, API version, PKS privileged annotation, challenge three. So containers. Okay, so um, the image it gives us looks like an account number. Central repo, something here. Um, image pull policy, preemption, mount path. Okay. So the one thing that sticks out to me is the account number there. Can we like exec into this? I don't think we can. Hold on. See if we can exec into this pod. What is the name of it? Accounting pod. Let's see what we get. Oh. Oops. So we can't even zap into that bad boy, right? All right. So. Hmm. So we have this thing, image 688 dkr ecr.us one um so that looks like that's the the repo that it's using um so let me see here what can we do hmm. anybody get anybody got any ideas any um anything you think we can do as far as with the the data that we receive right now anything If you guys don't, it's okay. Um, this is why we're here. Okay. Um. You no, I don't. I was about to say, uh, base sixty four in that last part there again inside the image, but I feel like we've overused that. Maybe, maybe not. Um. Let's Would we describe the pods? Yeah, let's try to describe in the pods. And then I'll try the base 64 um, option as well, too, after. So, but I think describing a pod is probably going to give us like similar stuff. Okay, so give us the image ID stuff here. Okay, all right. So, but what about log to see what happened? Like, well, we only have these permissions. Even... We only lock down to that. So, if I do K logs, it's probably going to um, tell me we don't have access, but let's try it. Oh, I copy that in there. Yeah. Okay. So K logs. Um. Here. Let's do that. Uh, nothing. Okay. That's fine. So this is what we're gonna. Oh, you said you wanted to look at the. Um. Well, I don't think this is base sixty four. Um. I'll try it. Like you want a base sixty four, like this part here. Because everything else looks like in plain text so let me echo yeah i was talking about yeah right after that uh sha yeah okay or, i'm sorry after the 256 that the rest yeah, of it there. oh okay the seven eight oh i see what you mean okay i got you let me uh, well let me just do this base 64 minus d and then let me just go back here backspace all right. And also, if you guys, once you guys start doing like running command and stuff a, a whole lot, and you probably already do this by pressing control A, it always brings you back to the beginning of the command. So I can do control A, get to the beginning. And I do control E, I can get to the back. So you don't have to like go all the way here. You can just easily just do that. So just a little tip for you all. Um, all right. So Thanks, yeah, that's a great uh, tip. Yeah. Yeah. Super helpful. So. Um, but as you see, that doesn't work. Um, there's some weird text there. So doesn't like it's looking to base in, it's not like base 64 encoded. So I can go ahead and let me clear my screen here. So, so very interesting thing about, um, AWS and their pods, right? So there's this thing, uh, called instance, it's IDMS instance, uh, I, IMDS instance meta metadata, um, service. 
it's helpful and useful to um, like pull like metadata from your EC2 instances. So there is a version one, which is extremely um, vulnerable. And then there's version two where it locks it down and everything needs to be gone through via token to get access to like your pod name, your EC2 instance name, the public IP of it, the private IP of it, um, and all that good stuff, right? So you've probably seen this if you're prepping for like your AWS exam, um, you know, you got to do this here. So you got to do a curl, HTTP. Um, it's a, what, 169.254. Dot one six nine dot two five four right, and then if I do latest, and then forward slash meta dash data. Ah, so we get some we get some good stuff here, right? So this is like information on the actual EQ, the pod itself. So we have the cluster, but this is like the EC two instance that we're like running on right now. The Wiz at EKS challenge, whatever, this is that that instance we're using, right? So you can actually pull information from here. So if I do a curl instance that made data and I go down to uh, identity credentials, so let's go ahead and just copy this. And you can get, like, uh, before I do that, let's do like um, local IPv4, right? So if I can do local IPv4, uh, let's see what we get. We actually get the local IP address of this instance, right? We can get the security groups. We can we can kind of like see a lot of things that we're not really supposed to be seeing. So let me go ahead and security groups. Um, and then okay, this is our security group that we're using on this uh, on this uh, server, right? So um, a lot of information that we can like poke into and really like get inside on. So it's kind of a, a very um, important thing to lock down. So you, you lock it down by upgrading yourself to instance metadata version two. So what we're gonna do now is exploit this here. I believe it's gonna be identity uh, credential. Let's see if that gets us there. And then, all right, so EC2 and then security credentials. Let me just copy that. So there's info or security credentials. We're looking for the security credentials and then or slash EC2 instance. It's empty. Hmm. All right, so that didn't work. So now you need to probe somewhere else. So instead of us looking at identity credentials, I want to look at IAM. Because IAM is also some type of security stuff, right? All right, let's go to security credentials now. So you guys understand what I'm doing, right? I'm just like, this is... um. You know, just uh, just just trying to poke and see what we have access to, right? So, and it's like privilege escalation. We're kind of just like trying to escalate ourselves um to more privileges, to seeing what we have. Ah, okay. Now we're working with something. Um, okay. So, in order to authenticate, you need this thing called like a token, right? And within this token, we have a we have certain things, right? So, um, in this case. It's showing us like it's showing us the access key ID. It's showing us the secret access key. So we got the, the access key and the secret, and then we also have the session token as well. So we got a lot of information here, right? So what we can try to do is let's let's try to do this. AWS configured. Let's see if it gives us the option. All right, cool. So we we actually have this access key. So let's try to use this. C, then the access key is right here. Copy that. All right. Let's see what else we get. Um, the region. So the region. So in the challenge, it says the region that it was in is US West one. So let's just copy that. US West one. The output is going to be new. Okay, so AWS, like S3 LS, and it may not show us anything, but we might be logged in, right? Let's see, give us some. Okay, that's key we provided doesn't exist. Let's see, um, see what we can do with this now. All right. 
I'm going to go ahead and do this here. In fact, let's do this. So we're going to put this in a token. Token is going to be token equals dollar sign. And we're going to do that whole thing. We want to get all of this because this is the token. Everything together is the token. So let's do this. So curl that. All right. All right. So now we do a control C. If I do an echo dollar sign token, let's see what it gives us. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, token equals curl. I am security credentials. Should do that. What up? Oops, sorry. No, okay. I'm missing this. Sorry, guys. So now we should get it right. All right. So now I need to do. Uh, I need to do this. Let's copy this whole thing. Um and um let me do token. Let me so I'm gonna do is this token is gonna be let me just add that last piece here and I think we should be good. So now if I echo token, I get the access key ID, I get the expiration date, and then I get the secret access key and the session token. So session token is just gonna say, okay, how long it's gonna last, right? Um so now, now that we have that, what can we do as far as with that token, right? So so now, and I'm I'm not losing you guys, right? I'm still with you. You still with me? Okay. Yeah. But at least trying. <laughs> hey, okay. That that that's that's a that's fine to me. That's fine with me. Let's see if it gets me like the login here. Do I have access to this? Security token and the request is invalid. Okay. Let me see. Why doesn't it like that? Secret access key. Okay, so I think I need to set the session token. So let me try this. So Export. I'll do these three things. So AWS underscore access. I think it's like key ID or something. And I can equal. What do I have? Um, it's access key. And that goes to show you, even if you have the access key and the actual um, password, you still are not necessarily granted like permissions there, right? So that's something important to know. So even if you, it's just like something like, you know, you have your passwords, somebody log, hack, try to hack your account, and have your password, but they don't have like the one-time password or you have like a two-factor authentication, that gives you like another layer of security so that someone can't just like, you know, look at you typing in your password or something like that. And, login so that's a good thing about that so let's go ahead and get the actual well that was just that was an access key so i'm going to do the secret now secret access key all right um token so i'm going to save the token now so the token um i need to do a session token now access we'll do session let's make a simple session and that's going to equal this here so the session token was that long thing here copy that paste it so if I echo dollar sign here, 
which is key ID. Okay, and then now if I do the same thing with token, we should get that. Okay, so it looks like we got that part working. So we got the access key and the token. I want to try that same command and see if it gives me um, anything now, um, now that we have that. I don't know. If it doesn't like it, I'm going to have to redo it. Missing access. Oh. Okay, so let's do um, export. Anyway, secret access key is going to equal. So where is the secret was up here. So now we have the access key ID. Now we need a secret, which is right here. So now let's try it again. And it should probably give us some login stuff. Hey, there we go. Okay, so we have our login password for our ECR, right? Okay, so let's do this. Um, let me see here. Crane off login again. I think we should do the login again. Crane off. Login. Now this time, I think we need to do this. The username for this is, okay, so I'm gonna copy this, this image, see if this is gonna be helpful for us. All right, so. So before it was, we were using Docker as far as the, um, the Docker image, right? So now I need to go ahead and just remove all of this. And we just need to go down to where it says uh, uh, Amazon.com, I believe. Okay. So minus U for user. I think it's going to be uh, just what AWS. I think AWS is a username. And then our password is going to be. Um, okay, I can set the password as a. I'll just do this. So dollar sign, and then we can do this here. So, and you guys understand a part of like me doing the dollar sign and then the command. Does that, does that make sense for you all? Did it get me in? Did it get me in? Yes, it got me in. Okay. So if you guys are afraid to ask whatever, so when you do it like the dollar sign, it's pretty much saying like a, it's like a variable. So um, instead of us like naming it um, like token or password, cause I can do like, I can do this too. I can do like password. Is oh, so that... it's kind of like uh, when you do your variables in like Terraform or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too familiar with, I don't use that much Terraform to be quite honest. So um, but, sure. uh, but yeah, it's pretty much, it just allows you to, um, like replace things. So like I can co copy it and I can do this. Right. Um, so password is going to equal, but I have to put in a dollar sign cause this is a command, right? So I can't just, sure. if I do password equals just AWS ECR, it's just going to like reference that yeah. verbatim, you know what I'm saying? But this is saying, okay, this is a command. So the, the output of this command is equal to password, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Seraphim is exactly what I thought of too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So now I can pretty much do the same thing. I, if I echo password, um, oh, well, if I do echo, oh crap. I think it was doing something in the back end. So if I do echo um, dollar sign password, it gives us the same contents there. So um, hopefully that uh, explain that for you all. But we, we, we got into it, right? So, <laughs> excuse me. We are able to go ahead and get into um, the image there, right? So now we need to go ahead and try to do the same thing we did before. Um, so let's go ahead and do like the same crane. It was crane something. So crane, um, let's try to get the config again. So crane config. And then I'm going to do the name of the actual image, which was, where was it? 
this long thing here. And I think that's that's all we had entered when we did it last time. All right, okay. So we got some more details here um, where it was created. Um, so we got something that says artifactory username and artifactory token. Uh, EKS challenge. Oh, token equals. Wait, is this the? Is this it? Um, it says token. I don't know if this is actually the, the password or whatever, but let's see. Oh, it is. Oh shit. Okay, cool. Or right, awesome. Sorry, excuse my language, but um, but there you have it. So we pretty much went through the same thing. We end up just having the image name, but we end up using um instance metadata um service and again instance metadata service is a way that you can like pull information and credentials directly from your instance so we pretty much went back and uh just to just to start off where we was at um we were able to go ahead and pull this information here so we were able to get the image um the url i mean not url but the actual account id the account number from here and from the from the actual instance itself we went ahead and did the instance metadata so remember, it's always going to be curl HTTP 169.254.169.254 latest metadata. So remember, if you go down, so if you just go down to latest, and you can always just like go piece by piece. So if you just remember the name, um, you can go to metadata. And also, if you ever wanted to know like what user data you started with on this instance, it's not really used that much anymore. And it's not a best practice because you can pull that detail, those details there. Um, it's empty. You want to start using like SSM, like like SSM, SSM documents um, that allows you to go ahead and like run commands like without having it be like actually inside the the image um, or your container. I mean the um, your uh, EC2 instance that you're running, which is um you know an anti pattern essentially. So go there metadata. Then we went overhead and uh, we navigated over to um, IAM. Because we tried um, instant identity credentials and that didn't get us anywhere. So we just went down to security credentials. So I'm just like literally just going layer by layer. And um, yeah, and it gave us, it gave us the uh, here. All right. And oh, crap. Credentials. And then it gave us this access key ID, and then it gave us a secret access key, and then the session token. So if I do AWS ECR, um, kind of tell us like what it's like looking for, right? So let's see, it's probably gonna say yeah, it needs, okay, like let me do like help. Come on, oh no, argument requires it. So get, oh, it's not letting you do it, but um, it's like get login. What is it called again? Forgot. Um, get login password. And you can always do like AWS ECR and go to the actual um, the official documentation. Like if you're stuck on something using an AWS CLI, um, oh, this is gonna be helpful here. Okay. So we can get the login password. the user hopefully that was able to as far as like be useful to you all this is a way that you can just you know find secrets and and and, and take advantage of it um as far as what eks another one as well as um like executing into a pod because if you do okay you get pods right another thing we need to wrap up so we do get k get pods 
you notice here, there's an interesting thing that happens. Minus output YAML. With pods, right? You have, they attach your service account. It attaches um, like secrets into the VAR. Look, you see mount path? There's a secret here. There's a KPI access. So we're able to access the API with this here. This is how that, you know, that this, this, this pod is able to access it, right? So the inside the pod itself, there is a file folder var run secrets Kubernetes IO service account. And within there, you can also get a token. And then that's where you can use to authenticate into the API server. So if you're doing like KGit pods from the actual API server, there's a way that you can access the pods, not even being inside the instance. Um, or cluster and still be able to access that. So that's where the security concerns can happen. And uh, this is where you can enable or disable um, like the automatic uh, configuring of a volume mount of a volume a secret as far as in the volume. So there's a lot of different things that we're going to be going over in the future about secrets and just better security best practices as I'm going on going for my CKS, which is a hell of a damn exam. So uh, it's going to be interesting to go ahead and uh, go through that with you all as well. So hopefully you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'm going to go ahead as far as close out the video on the recording. So if you're watching this live uh, or if you're watching this as far as on YouTube, as far as recording, we do this every Wednesday. Uh, try to do it at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we always try to find some fun, you know, activities to go ahead and just, you know, make our learning fun. And uh, as realistic as the world, you know, as the real world we can get. Um, but this is a fun way that you go as you guys can go ahead and uh, exploit and uh, uncover things that you really shouldn't um, in the EKS cluster. So thank you again, you know, like and subscribe and, uh, you know, definitely uh, look out for the next video. So we thank you again and uh, let us know uh, what you're looking forward to next. So thank you and peace.